Uh, Mr Robbie Butler has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister for Finance. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should raise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically uh, to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Finance for his assessment of the announcement of the extension of the coronavirus job retention scheme and its impact on businesses in Northern Ireland. And I call the Minister of Finance. Minister. Uh, for months, I have pressed, the chance, pressed on the Chancellor and the Chief Secretary of the Treasury for the extension of the furlough scheme so that jobs can be protected. So this announcement is welcome, albeit the extension is only for one month at this point. In particular, I welcome that the scheme will be open to those employees on the payroll on or before the 30th of October, which includes employees who have not previously been furloughed, as this has been a gap to date in support. Many businesses, however, have been faced with tough decisions about redundancies, which have not been helped by the lateness of this decision by the Treasury. It remains unclear whether the furlough scheme will be extended beyond the end of November, and I will be pressing for this. For the weeks and months ahead will continue to be very challenging for businesses and workers who need certainty that the support offered by the furlough scheme will remain in place. And I call Robbie Butler. I would like to thank the Minister for his answer. And Minister, as you will be well aware, many businesses, and you have reflected in your answer, are, are on their knees because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So I would like to ask, in addition to the UK Government's furlough scheme, what other financial measures and supports um, is, uh, are you, as an Executive Minister, actively considering uh, to support businesses in the event that res restrictions may return after um, the, the 13th um, uh, of November or when restrictions are applied in the future, given that that's the uncertainty that is really crippling people uh, at this time? Well, the, the member knows that we, uh, I was listening to the Economy Minister earlier, we, 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 executives are currently rolling out schemes, uh, in, in, particularly in relation to the businesses which have been affected by the current restrictions over this four week period, uh, and, and looking at a range of other measures, including the, the infrastructure minister has brought forward some measures for taxi and coach businesses and people who previously did not receive support. So, in allocating that money for that, we have also held back a sum of money, uh, which the executive agreed to last Thursday, uh, to ensure that should and none of us want to get into a situation where there has to be a repeat of these, these restrictions that are currently in operation, but should that necessity arise again, then we have held back some money to try and assist businesses through that phase as well. Now, we will continuously obviously get advice from the Chief Medical Officer and the Health Department in relation to how the COVID uh, virus is behaving and what the projections and the trajectory uh, are for it. Uh, and clearly, we want to make sure that people uh, heed the advice and that we, as a society, become more uh, proactive in terms of, of suppressing the spread of COVID right across the board. And then that, in turn, will hopefully not lead to a situation where we have to bring in restrictive measures. But we have held back. Uh, some additional money to make sure, should that uh, situation arise again, that we do have some support to be able to give out to businesses at that time. Call Paul Fruit. Given the much needed help that this will add to businesses in the next month, and it's something that we've all been pushing for, what sort of signal, Minister, does it send when his own party has support monies resting in their accounts? Will the Finance Minister make a statement? to the House on this issue to bring much-needed transparency to the population of Northern Ireland? Well, it clearly was not correct or right to have uh, any money which was uh, wrongly received uh, sitting in anyone's account. And of course, once the leadership of our party became aware of that, the money was returned immediately uh, to the centre and, and, and the action taken on the back of it. I have to say, lectures on propriety in government coming from a DUP member from North Antrim. Uh, where, at least at the very least, in terms of transparency, the Sinn Féin process in terms of dealing with this, uh, which I, I wasn't applied for, wasn't sought, but should have been paid back much quicker. The process that we have for dealing with transgressions within our party are much more transparent than the ones which apply in North Antrim for the DUP. I call Keeve Archibald. And as the Minister has outlined, we have been highlighting for many weeks that the ending of furlough would result in thousands of jobs lost and the job support scheme would not be adequate. Um, it is welcome that furlough is being extended, but would the Minister agree with me that it should be extended until at least the end of the financial year to give businesses and workers certainty in terms of planning and for some businesses to be able to retain a skilled workforce for when demand returns? Well, it is, as I say, it is welcome. Uh, 
bear in mind, we, we had argued for that extension for many months over the summer period. We then end up with a job support scheme, uh, which was quite restrictive. There then was a move about a week or two ago to expand the job support scheme, which was welcome, but it still wasn't as good as the furlough scheme. And then suddenly overnight we're back to the furlough scheme. So the uncertainty of the pandemic and how we're dealing with it has been greatly exacerbated by the approach of the Treasury in terms of, of, of getting support for uh, workers and employees, uh, because we've, we have been on the, on the very point on the eve of, of people coming to terms with the job support scheme. Uh, only a week ago it was changed, uh, and then suddenly we abruptly had a halt to that. Now, the fact that ourselves and the Scottish Finance Minister and the Welsh Finance Minister and in latter times the mayors of cities in Northern England were all calling for a furlough extension, and those call calls fell in deaf ears in the Treasury, and when the issue became an issue in Southern England, then that extension was very abruptly granted. Uh, welcome as it is, it has been uh, handled in a way which I think has caused huge uncertainty to business. So, of course, we want to see it extended uh, for one month. I don't think it's going to be sufficient. Uh, I hope that the British government recognise that sooner rather than later, and they give a notice to employers and employees in terms of the protection of jobs in the time ahead. Well, Matthew O'Toole. You, um, Mr. Speaker, uh, I first of all uh, welcome the fact that, um, uh, notwithstanding the fact the job retention scheme has been uh, extended by, uh, by the UK Treasury, the Sinn Féin have taken at least some action to recognise the strength of feeling in relation to money that was erroneously held or should not have been held in accounts in the people in Sinn Féin have not retained their jobs. Um, as a result, can I ask the Finance Minister, in relation to the extension to the furlough, um, I agree with him that it is unacceptable that uh, in, across the north of England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, people have been crying out for the furlough scheme to be extended, and the refusal to do so really highlights the constraints on this institution in terms of financial support for public health policy. Can he explain? Um, what further conversations he has had with the Treasurer around in-year flexibilities that he has requested so that we have the flexibility going forward, that we are not just simply relying on last-minute uh, action from the Treasury based around um, the public health situation in the south of England? Well, as a member will know, and, uh, we did update the committee on some of these discussions a, a week or so ago when I, I, I met the Finance Committee. We have continued to press, obviously, for the continuation of the furlough scheme, because we recognise that the, the end of uh, October was really a cliff edge uh, for many of uh, employers and employees. Uh, the job support scheme, while, while much uh, substandard, uh, very substandard in relation to the furlough scheme, uh, nonetheless, was, was better than a cliff edge. Uh, but now we're back to that decision. We have continued to press, as he knows, for flexibility in relation to our own finances uh, and early sight if there are to be any barn consequentials, uh, the earliest possible notice in relation to that, because uh, while the support that has come from the Treasury has been welcome uh, and, and no doubt has assisted us to assist businesses and uh, respond in terms of the health pandemic by supporting the health service itself uh, and to protect the vulnerable, the, the lateness and abruptness of these decisions has not helped us in terms of planning. Uh, and so we will continue to press for that flexibility. As he knows, the comprehensive spending review is underway in uh, Whitehall at the moment. We want early information in relation to the outcome of that. We're disappointed that we're not into a multi-annual budget cycle, uh, but we'll continue to press, as of Scotland and Wales, for flexibility in terms of our own finances for the end of the financial year. Call Stuart Dixon. Thank you, Minister, for coming to the House today. Minister, have you had any communication with the Economy Minister to uh, work out what might happen to those who would have been made redundant at the end of the furlough period, but because of the extension might now take advantage of a further period of furlough? And um, I, I understand that your uh, counterpart in London refused to answer that question today, but it is a question, it's a very serious question. People need to know if they can extend uh, the furlough period and rescind their redundancy. Uh, 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 notice at this point in time because it has the potential to knock people into a further year uh, of redundancy rights. Yeah, well, I think the member asked a very pertinent question, and, and thankfully that the, the scheme has. Uh, we're told the, the employer must be on the uh, employ, or the employee must be on the employer's PAY payroll uh, by up, up to midnight on the 30th of October. Uh, to, to qualify for the scheme. So I hope, and that, that's very late information for people, and they're only, obviously only coming to terms with it over the weekend and today. Uh, but I, I, I certainly, uh, we are continuing to press for further details, and we want to make those as public uh, as, as we possibly can, as early as we can, so that employers, in particular, and employees uh, who now can avail of that, uh, understand the, 
they can. Of course, there was a gap from the end of June through to October where newly employed uh, people couldn't avail of the scheme. They now can. And as I say, those people right up to almost the minute before midnight on the 3rd of October and can now qualify for it. Call Rachel Woods. Thank the Minister for his answers so far. The Minister will be aware of how hard the hospitality industry has been hit due to COVID-19 and restrictions, and how the job retention scheme was and literally is a lifeline for workers. Without it, we would see more redundancies made in an already precarious industry, and I agree with Ms Archibald that furlough should continue to at least the end of the next financial, this financial year at a minimum. But given this, will the Minister support Unite the Union's hospitality and tourism rescue plan, meet with union reps and bring it to the attention of the Executive for action? Well, I, I concur with her view in terms of the extension of furlough, and that's something we've been arguing for for some time, as I say, and we will continue to argue now that the scheme is back on the table again, albeit belatedly. Uh, I haven't seen the United Unions plan, but I have always had an open door policy of meeting the unions whenever they have an issue that they wish to present. I'm more than happy to meet them uh, to see, see what the detail of that plan is. Call Jerry Carl. Thank you. Uh, thanks to the Minister for his answer so far. Uh, what is the, the Minister's plan to address any uh, shortfalls uh, for wages in the scheme to ensure people are having their wages reduced as costs for fuel and other things uh, go up? And also, uh, what is the Minister's financial uh, plans if the Tories only extend the scheme for a month as they have currently uh, outlined? Well, the member will know that we don't have either the financial wherewithal nor the data to, to do wage schemes. And we, have, we had actually asked a uh, previous time HMRC, who hold all that data, to assist in the possibility of creating a bespoke scheme here in the north to do something like that, and they, we got a point blank refusal. So it's not possible for us to intervene in that way because we don't have. We don't know who, who pays taxes, how much they pay. HMRC hold, hold all that data, and plus the executive's finances uh, would not stretch to meeting wage support. Uh, that's something that has to come from Treasury. So we continue to press them for that, uh, and we, we do not see anybody uh, in greater hardship. This uh, experience of this pandemic has put a huge number of people into hardship, uh, and it's already created a significant number of redundancies. Uh, and of course, our arguments with Treasury have been to try and recognise that, that workers, and particularly low-paid and part-time workers, have been at the front end uh, of receiving that, particularly those in the hospitality sector. Uh, which, which tends to employ a lot of people in kind of low-paid, part-time, and primarily a lot of women as well uh, in that sector. And so we, we continuously press that case uh, with Treasury because those are schemes only they can do. I call Claire Sugden. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the Minister has confirmed, and, you know, just, just so I get this right, that uh, those employees that were employed after the original cut-off date, I think it was at the end of March for the original furlough scheme, now up until the end of October can apply for the new furlough scheme. Um, and to labour uh, Mr. Dixon's point around those who have already been made redundant, I understand that the British government did reverse that process in that it was those where that paperwork had been submitted, they, they brought forward the dates so that then they were included. Is that something that um, you as a minister are, are asking on behalf of the people of Northern Ireland who have already been made redundant, anticipating that furlough would have come to an end in October? Well, as I say, I think it was the end of June was the date that uh, previously cut off people. Uh, and that, that particularly over uh, in hospitality, people who are employed over the summer season. Uh, I fell through that gap. Uh, we are told that, that people who are on a PAY pay roll by the 29th uh, of October uh, are eligible. Uh, there's obviously much more detail. This came very late in the day on Friday. There's much more detail to be worked through that, and officials are continuing to engage the Treasury. So as soon as uh, we get more accurate information for employers and employees, uh, we will make that public, because clearly this is a time of great stress for people not understanding. Uh, as I say, welcome as these schemes are, they have come in a very haphazard way. Uh, to us, uh, and, and that doesn't give certainty for people who are facing redundancy, and it doesn't give certainty for people who are trying to run businesses as well. Paul Given. The decision, welcome as it is, nevertheless, will be too late for some people, for the minister, uh, for the reasons the minister has outlined, with the changes of the scheme from June, and now going back to the, the premium scheme for a better uh, want of phrase. Um, but. Given that businesses will be asking for support packages in the future, um, are there any Barnet consequentials that have flowed from the decisions taken at Treasury in the, the most recent announcements by the Prime Minister? And does the Minister also agree that the best support that we can give to our businesses is to allow them to get back to business? Well, in, in, in terms of recent announcements, uh, we are continuing to bottom out with Treasury, whether there may be further Barnet consequentials, and I hope. We will find some more information on that this week. Uh, 
We're not certain whether that is the case or not, but uh, we continue to, to, to uh, explore that with them. Uh, and of course, yes, we want to see businesses back working again, but we have that balance to strike, as he knows, between ensuring the suppression of the, the virus uh, and allowing people to go out and do as normal an activity as they possibly can. Uh, and while we have had restrictions here, they are not on the same level as they are happening currently in England. Uh, we have all retail open, with not just essential retail, as they are doing there. Uh, so, uh, and I know we have had the schools, timely for the Education Minister to come in, we have had the schools uh, closed down for two weeks, uh, but they are back open today. And as I say, the, the executive, from my experience, does not want to take any level of restriction for one minute longer than is absolutely necessary. And of course, it's much better for businesses if they can trade. Uh, but in the absence of them being able to do that, we need to get as much support package to them as we can. Rosemary Barton. Thank you. Minister, you spoke earlier on uh, about money that you still had held back in relation in case it, in case it was needed. Uh, do you have any plans, along with the Minister of Economy, to perhaps support those businesses that are still being excluded? Well, the, the member will probably know from previous statements I've made here that as well as the money we allocated last week, uh, we had always held back a sum of 55 million for, for groups who were excluded. And I, I'm very pleased that at long last, some of them appear to be beginning to be addressed in terms of taxis and coach operators. And I know there are some issues in relation to those schemes, but there is nonetheless uh, some move to address that. Uh, there are other sectors, uh, people who are self-employed, who have been, who've been left out, and there are schemes that have been opened up. Uh, and I most sincerely hope that those schemes will uh, be able to address those. So we had held aside a sum of money for those who were previously excluded. Uh, and I, I made the point, and made the point at the executive that you know, while we're in the second round of support for some businesses, it's grossly unfair to people who have never yet received any support. So I think every effort, and I have encouraged executive colleagues from across all the departments who may have responsibility to make every effort to ensure that they can put together some measures to provide support to those people who have continuously lost out since the start of the pandemic. Well, Andre Muir. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his responses thus far. I must say that uh, hearing the announcement on Saturday evening did strike me that yet again the South of England comes first when it's the UK government's response to the pandemic has pushed many people in Northern Ireland into poverty as a result of the less favourable job support scheme. I wouldn't call furlough a premium scheme at all. Um, can the Minister outline what impact the extension of furlough and the additional grant monies will have upon any decisions to extend the restrictions beyond the 13th of November? Well, I mean, the, the, the restrictions were brought in uh, before there was a job support scheme. There was the continuation of furlough for the first half of our four-week restriction period, and then the job support scheme uh, beyond that. I have to say, I mean, clearly you have to under take uh, cognizance of the economic impact in terms of, of workers and of businesses that restrictions are going to have, and you try and mitigate those as best you can, because you believe that the restrictions you're bringing in are absolutely necessary in order to suppress the virus, protect the health service and save lives. That's the, the reason we do this. So it, it, the, uh, the, uh, the extension of the furlough scheme, I don't think, will have any real bearing in relation to that, albeit if uh, it, it continues to protect workers in a better way than perhaps the job support scheme uh, would have done. So it is a better level of protection. But regardless of us coming out of our restriction period in, in two weeks' time, we will continue to argue for the furlough scheme to, to continue to operate because even at that, we are not, and the economy is not back to full level of operating and it won't be possible to get back to full level of operating. Social uh, restrictions will still apply and that makes it more difficult for hospitality in particular to do business and indeed retail to do business as well. Uh, and so I think there will be a continuation uh, in the economic uncertainty uh, for the furlough scheme to remain. So it's not necessarily linked to any extension of our restrictions, but I think in terms of the damage the economy has, has shipped over the, over the last uh, number of months, I think there is a need for the extension of that scheme. And that's why we've continuously argued for that. And that's why I will continue to press the Treasury for an extension of it in the time ahead. I call Gordon Dunn. Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank the Minister for his answers today. And I think we all welcome the furlough scheme. And, um, the, the confirmation from the Minister that new applicants can now apply, I think, is, is reassuring. And I'm sure he uh, recognises the, the great values of being part of the United Kingdom that have brought forward such a scheme. Yeah. And um, further, just to earlier discussion, what is the Minister's opinion about um, getting the balance right, following on from the First Minister's statement of last week, where we're encouraging people to get the balance right 
in relation to living, working and doing business with COVID. What's your opinion on, on that as we move forward, trying to get a good Christmas, not for, just for business, but for everyone? Well, of course, there, there are a range of, of challenges and, and arguably damage to society as a consequence of the pandemic. And a lot of those are economic. Uh, and that's why a lot of these schemes have been put in place, and that's why the, the, the thing we're discussing here today, the furlough scheme, it has been an essential component of mitigating against the damage caused by the economic downturn and the, the, the restrictions that have had to be put in place over various times. Uh, and there's also societal damage. We recognise that families, communities, uh, all of that interaction, which is very much part uh, of our everyday life and what makes us human beings and the ability to interact with others is a key component of what we are. So that has all been uh, damaged, it's all been affected. Uh, and of course, we want to see as much ability for society to be able to move forward as we possibly can. But that also has to be balanced against the fact that people are dying as a consequence of this pandemic. So we have a responsibility to protect public health. We have a responsibility to protect those vulnerable people who, who are more vulnerable to the pandemic than others, and to make sure that transmission is kept down within the community. And that is a balance and exercise between taking the necessary steps to do that and also in, ensuring that society can continue to function as best it possibly can and business and the economy can continue to function as best it possibly can. And that's a constant challenge. And that is a real challenge in the executive and there are no easy decisions to be taken in that regard. And uh, I'm sure my colleague across the way will, will verify. We have grappled with this on many, many occasions and we've debated it out and we've eventually come to decisions which we've all attempted to stand over. Uh, and we'll do that in the best interest of all of the people that we represent collectively. Call Jim Allister. Could the Minister bring some clarity for those who have been uh, employed within the hospitality sector, and it has been closed down now for the last two weeks, will they now qualify for furlough on a backdated basis? Well, those who qualified for furlough, who were in that sector from before the end of June, uh, if I remember the date, qualified for furlough anyway up until the 31st of the month, because the furlough scheme continued up to that period. What they have now done, and then they would move into job support and from last week, an improved job support scheme, but now that has been overtaken by a continuation of furlough. Uh, so in many ways, we're trying to get a lot of the detail in relation to this. He'll accept that this isn't ideal in terms of planning, are, are, are ensuring that there's clarity for workers and for employers as well. Uh, so we're now told that people who were in, on the PAY role up to the 30th, midnight on the 30th of October, can qualify for the scheme. And that may, as, as we understand it, fill the gap between people who were employed over the summer period uh, so that they can, they can follow. So there is more detail to be hammered out. Uh, this is late notice, it, as, as uh, probably the uh, was characteristic of that late notice. It didn't get the give the full detail that is required, and that's something we have to hammer out with Treasury over the, the next couple of days, and we're already engaging with them on that, because I think it is important, and I'm sure he will agree, to have clarity for employers and for employees alike. That concludes this item of business, and I'll ask members to take a raise for a couple of moments.